I'll be honest, I did not make this thumbnail in Final Cut Pro. I made it in Adobe Photoshop. <laughs> but that's not to say that you can't make thumbnails in Final Cut Pro. In fact, you definitely can. Let me show you how. Step one is to create a project that has the correct resolution so when you export the finished thumbnail, you're good to go. So head to New, create a new project, and change this to 720p. This satisfies YouTube's requirements of custom thumbnails being 1280 by 720. Step two is to take the picture of you that you want to cut out. Here I have my dumb YouTube face. And by the way, this is a video. So you'll create what is called a hold frame by selecting the frame you like of yourself for the thumbnail and pressing Shift and H. You'll see that if I drag this out and scrub the timeline, it is now a still picture. First and foremost, I'm gonna add a conversion LUT since I stupidly shot this in a log profile, which for this instance isn't smart because it just adds in extra steps. For shooting almost all of my videos though, I always shoot in log. Oh, you're cool, bro. Next, we'll head into the effects tab and find draw mask. Think of this effect like scissors that will allow you to cut out whatever you want from your shot. You can also animate the movement of that shape, but that's something you'll need to check out in my other videos. To cut out yourself, you may want to zoom in and you'll have to go through the process of making points, outlining yourself. To make a curved point, hold down when clicking and drag. The farther you drag, the more broad that curve is gonna be. Make sure to connect the points when you're done. After that, use the feather slider to make the outline not so harsh. The edges become a little smoother, essentially. Step three is to color grade yourself how you want. I'm gonna start by opening my color curves and making an S curve to add more contrast in the image. I'm gonna crank up my highlights and midtones by pushing up here, since I really wanna stand out in the shot since this is a YouTube thumbnail. But don't push too much or it'll look unnatural. I'll head into my color wheels and I'll add some saturation into my whole image by increasing the global saturation slider here. Then I'll add some teal into my shadows and a little bit of orange into my highlights. Then add the sharpen effect to give yourself some more definition. I'm gonna go with 4.0 here. Definitely don't go any higher than 10. I mean, it's crazy that the sharpen effect is so strong. Who would ever even go to 50? 100 is just crazy. Step four is to take a screenshot or whatever picture you want behind you and stick it under the clip of you. Now for this thumbnail, I'm gonna hit the distort tool and make this right side larger so it looks like this shot is angled. Then I'll add a bit of Gaussian blur to that and adjust the amount. Step five, let's add this glow effect that I added here in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is hold option, select this shot and drag down. This makes an immediate copy of that clip. I'll increase the size on this shot just a little. Head into your effects window and find colorize. I'll change this to the colors that I want. And we'll go back into our effects and find gosh and blur and apply that. Let's increase the amount and the blur boost. And if the colors seem to have dissipated or changed on you, you can open a color wheels and increase the saturation a bunch and also brighten it up a bit if you need to. I may actually go back into the video inspector and increase the blur boost a bit more and decrease the opacity a tad. I also added a very light stroke outlining myself in Photoshop and we can do that here by selecting the top clip of me and using a plugin that my friend Dylan Bates put together and it has a stroke effect in it. It's basically all the tools in Apple Motion brought over to Final Cut, it's super handy. I'll link it in the description. I'll adjust the color, the width, and switch this to outside. Next, let's bring in a PNG version of the Final Cut Pro logo. And when you're making your thumbnail, anytime you want a logo or anything that looks cut out, just find the .png version of that online. I'll press Shift T to bring up the transform tool and I'll bring this to the position that I'd like. And we'll hit the distort tool to shape our logo here so it looks like it's flying a different way. Also, you can rotate the logo by using the transform tool, if you didn't know. Just like I did in the Photoshop version of the thumbnail, we'll add some motion blur. So head into your effects and find directional blur. 
Once you apply it, you can just drag here to increase or decrease the intensity of the blur and adjust its direction. I'll press Option and drag down to duplicate the logo. Let's turn off the directional blur. We'll add Colorize on it. And I'll add a Gaussian blur onto this outline to make it into a cool glow effect, like we did with my cutout self. And like we did before, I'll open a color wheels to add more saturation to that blue. I'm gonna add in more logos, but I'll speed this part up because you saw how to do it and you probably don't care to see me do it three more times. Just a tip, press Command C to copy the effects on a clip and then Command Shift V to bring up the paste attributes window. Then you can select the effects that you like on that new clip. For the logo in my hands, I'll scale it down to size and put it in position. and we'll use the draw mask tool again to cut out where my fingers are. Quick tip for you, you can disable a clip by pressing V and that's gonna allow us to see what we're outlining here. And once again, remember that by clicking and dragging, you can make a curved line. I'll connect the lines and click V again to enable the clip. And we'll click invert here and let's feather it a bit. For the piece de resistance, let's bring another FCP logo onto the timeline and scale it down so it's really small. And if you need to zoom in, you should. I'll bring the logo so it looks like it's a reflection in my eyes. And then I'll duplicate it by holding Option again and dragging and bringing it over to the other eye with the transform tool. Now you can decrease the opacity on this or change the blend mode of these. But I found that when zoomed out, and especially with small YouTube thumbnails, full 100% opacity doesn't look like too much. Then once you're all done, you'll hit File, Share, to save current frame, and you'll go to Settings and make sure this is a JPEG file. Then hit Next, save it where you want to, and you're done. So what do you think? Do you think you'll use Final Cut to make your own thumbnails? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.